static routing is more than enough to meet your networking needs when you have a small network. However, as your network grows, the configuration and management increase as well. At this point, you may consider adopting dynamic routing for your network. The main factors in switching from static to dynamic routing are typically budget, current network size and topology, expected network growth, and available resources for ongoing maintenance. Once you decided that dynamic routing is the way to go, there is a variety of supported protocols to choose from. In this video, we will not be focusing on protocol comparison, but only provide a quick overview. PGP is most often used to link multiple networks together. Both RIP and OSPF are used to implement dynamic routing for the local subnets. The use of RIP has been declining, so while the final protocol choice depends on your specific situation, OSPF is our suggested dynamic routing protocol for intranets. For detailed comparison among the dynamic routing protocols, please refer to the following document. In this video, we will demonstrate how to configure dynamic routing using the OSPF protocol. Let's start with the configuration steps for the FortiGate router managing a local subnet. Floron FortiGate has two interfaces connected to the network. Port 1 is the external interface connected to the gateway FortiGate. Port 2 is the internal interface connected to the sales subnet. To configure the FortiGate interfaces, go to Network Interfaces, edit the external interface. We will use upstream for the LS name, set the addressing mode, and configure the administrative access. Save the changes. Next, configure Floron FortiGate internal interface. Specify the LS name, set the addressing mode, configure the administrative access. Enable DHCP server option if desired. DHCP mode will allow FortiGate interface to dynamically assign IPs to the internal computers. Now we are going to configure OSPF for the internal FortiGate. Go to Network OSPF, set FortiGate ID to the internal IP address. Create a new area by setting the following information for the area ID, type, and authentication. Then create a new network entry and set the information as follows. For our basic example, we do not have to configure the interfaces. If you need to specify parameters like cost or authentication, then you will create entries for the respective interfaces. Next, we will show the configurations for the Gateway FortiGate, which are slightly different. In our basic setup, the external interface of the Gateway FortiGate has a static route to the ISP gateway, so we will not be looking at configuring it here. However, we will need to configure the internal facing interface. Set the addressing mode, the administrative access, and optionally the DHCP server. Your specific settings may differ from this configuration. The OSPF configuration for the Gateway FortiGate internal interface will be similar to that one of the internal FortiGate. Go to Network OSPF, set FortiGate ID to the internal IP address. Create a new area by setting the following information for the area ID, type, and authentication. Create a new network and set the following information. As discussed before, we will not be configuring interface for this example. However, we must configure the advanced settings for the Gateway FortiGate and set the inject default route to regular areas. The setting means that if the Gateway FortiGate has a default route, it will provide other devices with this default route pointing to the Gateway FortiGate. Next, let's check if the OSPF configuration was successful. Go to Network Routing page and add a routing widget. Expand it to the full screen mode. The widget shows all the routes learned by the FortiGate. You can also use the command line interface to check the routing table for the OSPF. If the OSPF routes are not present, please check the OSPF settings on each FortiGate. Another useful command helps check the state of the OSPF neighbors. Two routers will only exchange information successfully if the state column value is set to full. Other values in the state column indicate that the routers are online but cannot pass updates to each other. And this can be the source of routing failures. Try running a ping command to make sure that the router is reachable. Make sure the MTU size for the interface is configured correctly. You can also check the OSPF settings and make sure the network type and the if applicable timers are set correctly. For additional information about OSPF configuration, please refer to the online documentation.
And this concludes our video. Thank you for watching.